What is going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Fall, and welcome to Ringside News. We're talking about Monday Night Raw today, and we are on the road to King and Queen of the Ring. And these are great matches, but with tournaments, there are plenty of losers. But as you can see, right there on the side of my screen there, technology has allowed us to present some fun little tweets from people. The person I've interviewed twice now, EO Sky, and someone I interviewed recently at WrestleMania, Lyra Valkyria. And I swear I said her name wrong both different ways, last name and first name. But yes, they're going to compete next weekend. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That is going to be a great matchup. But again, as you can see, Shayna Baszler, who attacked EO before the match even started, I was a little sad that Shayna lost because EO Sky has been a women's champion for quite a long time. And the winner of this tournament really hasn't been told what they're going to get except a very shiny crown. Are they going to get a championship match, say, at Money in the Bank or SummerSlam? I wish they would have added some stipulations here so we'd all know what the hell is this for? Is this really just for a crown? A fancy crown? Oh, hello. Like, that's, that's fun for the concept, I guess, to look at it that way. But also, why not add more stakes, championship opportunities? Intercontinental title, U.S. championship, world title, anything. I think that would have been nice. But I love the WWE tweet that they put out. Because if you look at Carlito, there he is. <laughs> he lost his mustache. Only got the little goat. <laughs> look at Dom. Massive mustache. So the WWE tweets out, so that's where... Carlito's mustache went. I must say, whoever is in charge of the WWE's Twitter account is brilliant at jokes. Years ago, when they also ran the WWE Universe account, they were completely different. The Universe was like uh, what the fans were thinking, so they retweeted a bunch of fans all night long during Raw and NXT and SmackDown. They don't do that anymore. No, 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 no. Uh, they're just accounts to promote, which I get. But I loved, loved that tweet. And it seems, again, that Dominic keeps wanting to add members to Judgment Day. Was it Andrade, Santos, Carlito? Possibly, maybe Dom should just form his own group, his own LWO. Because he keeps trying to bring in members. It doesn't seem to work out. Only JD, I guess, has worked out, and he's not even on the T-shirt. But I love, I love you, WWE social media, with your hilarious mustache jokes. This this account right here, hang him high. Probably have to pause this so I don't get uh, in trouble. Hang him high is one of the most brilliant Twitter accounts that ever existed because every time someone either gets punch in the face or kicked hard or a big move happens this account adds sonic the hedgehog rings to it and this is no different but except usually there's like 10 rings that fall but i love the fact that hang em high put one ring because backstage as Liv morgan is lipping off becky lynch shows up and gives her a punch. Now, I think they were trying to recreate the moment with Becky Lynch and Dominic Mysterio on Raw weeks ago where she leveled him with a punch. It was beautiful. I think they're trying to recreate it here, except it looked like either maybe Becky pulled her punch or she's supposed to only give her a little tap. I don't know, because I, I, I wasn't there in the planning of this segment, but it looked like a very flimsy punch as in, you know, a very quick one. Usually in wrestling, we follow through. We make big gestures. So there's nothing wrong with this punch. But I love that hang them high. Instead of putting 10 rings, put one little dinky ass ring. Because that punch, I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to be. I really don't know what it's supposed to be about. And this is, again, something that is bothering me about Chad Gable. Belittling the Alpha Academy. Tozawa, Maxine. Mr. Otis himself. Love the group. 
I love the development of Chad Gable. But he's heading into King and Queen of the Ring. And he has slapped Otis. He has belittled Tazawa out in the ring as well. Injuring him in a place you don't want to be injured. And now he has a championship opportunity. It's him, Sami Zayn, Bronson Reed at King and Queen of the Ring. I'm excited for King and Queen of the Ring. I like this matchup. But two two kind of thoughts here. Chad Gable either is going to win this matchup by when Sammy has the match one, you know, you throw Sammy's out, he gets Bronson Reed pins him. Or Bronson Reed has the match one on Sammy Zayn and Chad Gable throws out and wins the match. Either way, I feel like Chad Gable needs to win. If he heads into this matchup and Sammy Zayn just beats Bronson Reed and Chad's like, oh, this was mine. I guess that extends this a little bit. Extends it until what we got clash of the castle in June, middle of June, beginning of July of money in the bank. So you have to fill in some time. I get that part, but I fear for Chad Gable's character that if he doesn't achieve something soon, he's just going to be a guy who turned heel, who has a group that either turns on him because they're all going to be baby faces by themselves or, or which I pray to God happens. They all realize he's been right this whole time. Master Gable's been right this whole friggin' time. And they all turn heel with him and help him cheat and win the Intercontinental Championship from Sami Zayn. That's what I hope, folks. That's what I hope. I don't know if it's going to happen. A lot of Chad Gable scenarios there. But I hope he wins at the next pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia. I hope. Another huge moment here on Monday Night Raw. By the way, WrestleOps, great account as well. Always posting great videos and pictures. The legendary, as they put it, legendary Lillian Garcia made an appearance on Monday Night Raw. There she is with her, with her daughter. No, I'm just kidding. They're not <laughs> their daughter. But Lillian Garcia was the voice of Raw for a whole generation. When we came down to, what was it, Papa Roach? Wait, was that song? Ding, 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 ding. Go! Take your best. Come on, let it go. That song. She's the voice of a little bit in the Attitude Era, a little bit later on. And the fact that she's out here and she's ageless because she's ageless. She, I don't know. She's like a wizard or something. She's out there with Samantha, giving props to Samantha because in the past you had Howard Finkel, Tony Chimmel. You had, um, Oh, that girl's name from the early 90s. She has a guy's name. I'll never remember it. But they were great at ring announcers. And we had Lillian Garcia. I also, Michael Buffer. And then as time went on, you know, Justin Roberts. But Lillian Garcia was a part of so many people's childhood. So many memories were created by her. But with Samantha now, Samantha doesn't feel like controlled as in you're the announcer. Announce the winners. Announce where they're from. Get them in the ring. That's it. Samantha is allowed to obviously add a whole different element of a human emotion to when she's excited or sad or mad or glad when somebody wins. And it adds to the flavor. It adds for all of us at home experiencing this. So Lily Garcia being here. Great to see her. And we're clearly on the road to having a Damian Priest. Drew McIntyre match. But Damian Priest didn't make a point that made me laugh hysterically, was, you know, if Drew just won the championship and left the ring with his championship and his wife, he never would have got cashed in on, and Drew would still be champion. So Damian pointed out that perhaps CM Punk is more important than Drew McIntyre's wife and championship. A lot of big words there. A lot of big words. <laughs> and then, of course, the last thing here, uh, Jey Uso. Jey Uso has advanced in the King of the Ring. And this entrance, I don't want to play because we'll probably get sued. But this entrance is something we've enjoyed. I love, me and my family do it all the time, too. We love, we love doing this. It's just, it's just fun to do, right? You know, you do this with your hands or you clap. It's just fun to do, be part of the group. And Jey Uso, obviously in France, everyone's talking about that. But same time before that, 
he always had a great entrance. Royal Rumble. Go back to um, Chicago. So I'm serious. He's on top of the the War Games cage, and everyone's doing this. We we were having a great time, and he was having a great time. Now they're adding trying to add lights to this thing. Let's see where this goes because the production value of the WWE is obviously up. So adding more elements to anything is cool with me. 100% cool with me. But thank you so much for listening to my thoughts on Monday Night Raw. I thought it was a good show. And I guess we're going to see what happens next. But uh, I think the road to King and Queen of the Ring is looking pretty good. A lot of losers in a tournament. A lot of losers. But still fun. So thanks for joining in with my fun today. On Ringside News. Monday Night Raw. Have a good one, folks.